Uh, we have this video question from Gladys. So let's roll it and see what she asks. My question is on thyroids. So based on the thyroid medication is prescribed based on a blood test and the numbers on the THS. But what can we do if the numbers on our blood test are okay, they are supposed to be balanced, but our body is telling us a different story. Thank you so much. Great question. Doctor, your thoughts? Sure. So first of all, I'm sorry that Gladys is feeling that way. This is a tough time for all of us. And I, you know, I think it's terrific that she's asking the question in the first place. So, so a couple of things to think about. Number one, if you have something called hyperthyroidism, and Gladys is right, there's a number of things you look on on lab work. There's a number of things that we do with medications to, to adjust a patient's treatment should they be a, a person who has hyperthyroidism. And hyperthyroidism is just like it sounds. So it's, you, it's a feeling of kind of being hyper. So you could have increased anxiety, difficulty sleeping, um, blood pressure could go up, feeling hot and sweaty. So those are things to be on the lookout for if you're concerned about hyperthyroidism. On the flip side, if you're concerned about hypothyroidism, it's very much the, the opposite. So it's a feeling of, of being sluggish, more depressed, gaining weight, getting constipated. So those are the two spectrums your, your doc is looking out for to understand if they need to change or adjust medications. Now, all of that said, if Gladys is not feeling well, even though everything on her blood work is looking good and her medications are set correctly accordingly, it's important to listen to your body and it's probably time for her to give her doc a call, right? Great to tune into PBS, great to get information and to try out to do a lot of this ourselves right now with the pandemic and so many folks doing research. But this is something you wanna to talk to your doc about. If you're not feeling well, it could be your thyroid, it could be something else. So it's, it's worth getting an evaluation. Thank you, Dr. G. Uh, I do want to remind our viewers that if you do have a question, we have several ways you can send them in. Uh, you can phone us, you can email us. We'd love to see a video question from you. Go to questions at allhealthtv.com for questions that you may have. Phone number is 855-796-4475. Or you can send a video question just like Gladys did to our website, allhealthtv.com. All right, doctor, we have lots of vaccine related questions. So this one is from Carly, and here's what she asks. If you're feeling sick, should you postpone getting vaccinated and how long? I love that question. Doctor? So, you know, we get asked this a lot by patients all the time, right? And, and again, we're learning this as we go, but current CDC guidelines tell us that if you are sick for whatever reason, you want to wait about 10 days if you've got a normal immune system. So that means if you start feeling kind of crummy on May 1st, then you want to wait to get the vaccine until about 10 days later, so May 11th. If you're someone who falls into the immunocompromised category, which means your immune system is not at 100%, CDC recommends waiting about 20 days from symptom onset, which means if you start feeling crummy around May 1st, then you're eligible to get vaccinated May 21st. I hope that's helpful and I hope you feel better, Carly. Thank you so much, doctor. Uh, this one comes to us from Angelica and she asks, which vaccine is indicated for those with a low platelet count? Dr. G? So Angelica, you know, the only indication right now for getting the vaccine is if you're 16 and older in the United States and you're concerned about getting, not getting COVID, right? It's the best preventative measure and indication that we have out there. There's no current vaccine recommended for a low platelet count. I know there's a lot of information out there about different kind of blood disorders and possible clots happening with various vaccines, but this is not at all an indication right now. And if you do have low platelet counts, this is probably something you want to discuss with your doctor if there are any concerns about bleeding or an adverse reaction that you need to be aware of. But that's really going to be a conversation and an evaluation you want your doc to help you make that decision. Great information. All right, doctor, you know, the virus mutations called variants are causing the global surge of cases. I wanna watch this uh, quick video, it's about a minute long, and then let's talk about it right after. Take a look. Scientists say COVID-19 mutations called virus variants are fueling a rise in cases around the world. The most effective way to stop this surge is for all countries to work together to get as many people as possible vaccinated. 
Experts say as long as the virus continues to proliferate in one area, mutations will develop and they can show up anywhere. A lot of those variants are coming from countries where the epidemic is uncontrolled. So just as, as important it is to control the epidemic in our community, it's important for us to control the epidemic in our larger community, i.e. our continent or even our world, because until everybody is safe, nobody's safe. Research shows that vaccines protect people from severe COVID symptoms, even if they're infected by one of the variants. But as the virus circulates, even more variants occur. So, Doctor, your thoughts on this? Uh, is it a race between the vaccines and the variants? So it really is, right? This is this is kind of a race against time, and and I'll explain this in as simple as simple a way as I can. And this might be hopefully the next time I see you in person, Olga, right? So think about the virus. Think about COVID nineteen having more time to do wardrobe changes, right? So you and I, as women, if we get more time, you know, we're going to put on a few more shoes. We're going to put on a few more dresses. And what happens is that when we give the virus more time and more people to infect all over the globe, it's effectively able to dye its hair, change its shoes, change the spikes in its shoes. And essentially what happens is that the, the new variant or the new mutation or the new wardrobe, if you would, is, is now unrecognizable or potentially unrecognizable to the immune system. So the concern is, the virus getting more lethal and more infectious. And that's really what we're seeing. And that's our biggest concern. If we, if we slow the virus in its tracks, if we decrease the amount of time it has to do that wardrobe change, that's what we accomplish by getting patients vaccinated, getting people vaccinated. So the virus has nowhere to go. The virus is smart. It wants to survive. And the way to survive is to change. Just like all of us, we change with time. We change to survive. That's exactly what the virus is doing. And for us to survive, we've got to get vaccinated every single person. And I finally got my second shot, Dr. G, just so you know. <laughs> Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. That's terrific. See, you're, you're helping already. Although I would love to go grab a wardrobe change sometime when this is all over. <laughs> yes, and I loved the analogy. That was a great analogy, by the way. You make it so simple to understand. By the way, I got another question um, regarding variants. So let's take this one, doctor, and let's look at this question from Mabel. Uh, the Michigan virus rate is going up. It's attacking children with the P1 variant. What's P1, Dr. G? Sure. So again, there are different variants out there. The P1 variant is the one that we think of as the Brazilian variant, right? And, and you mentioned it, the video mentioned this earlier. We've become a global society, right? So interesting enough, the Brazilian variant, the P1 variant, was actually found in Japan from folks from Brazil. So what we have to remember is we are a global society and the only way we get out of this is by stopping the variants, stopping the mutations in its track, stopping those wardrobe changes. The P1 is another, uh, another type of wardrobe change and really the biggest concern with that one is reinfection. So again, still finding information, still getting information, but the concern that the CDC is reporting right now is this concern that some folks are getting the infection even, sorry, getting infected even if they've been vaccinated and even if they've already had COVID before. So this is very concerning. And let me piggyback on that because someone just wrote here and let me take this question. The CDC says, despite so many people being vaccinated, COVID cases are up. So, uh, so again, this has to do, right? So those wardrobe changes are happening. The variants are able to still spread. And what we're also seeing is because more and more adults are getting vaccinated, right? Olga being one of them, we're really happy for her. This is now also finding its way into children, right? We're finding that the, the variants are mutating, they're it's getting smarter, effectively the virus is getting smarter and it is continuing to find bodies to infect. So we've got to get vaccinated. And